but we, by pastor's restraint, we defer that announcement. And at this moment, we're going to just make the announcement. Praise the Lord. And what is the good news? Two of our brain have prayed. In the... Wait, let me, let me finish. <laughs> what do you know I'm about to say? Two of our brain have prayed. They've sought the face of God in the area of marriage. And uh, they have decided to press forward. Praise the Lord. And so all our, our single brothers and sisters, if you were looking in this direction, you may retire, change direction. Amen. We are excited to announce that Sister Happiness Samuel. Can somebody carry her out, if you can? Amen. Praise the Lord. Our sister, beloved sister, faithful sister, committed sister, is going to be getting married in the month of February. To be precise, February 17th. I thought you would ask me to who. Oh, you were waiting for me. Now you wait no longer. Uh, the lucky brother, the favored brother, is brother Nobu Kobari. And bro Kobari is right on the screen. Bro Kobari, can you, can you just wave? Just wave. Praise the Lord. The covet your prayers, please. They are already in the mode of marriage. Can you see the corresponding uniform? Wow. You can tell that uh, it's going to be a great day, February 17th. Please, they covet your prayers. They covet your support. Uh, pray for them that the Lord that has brought them this far will help them complete that project that they have started. And we trust February 17th. All road is going to lead to River State Nigeria <laughs> and all the sympathizers supporters start arranging for your tickets now we'll see how the extent that your love can go amen God bless you sister amen uh, without further ado we're going to invite the uh, adult choir to come up and uh, minister to us adult choir please uh, quickly come forward and minister so that we can move to the next item.
grateful heart with a song of praise with an outstretched arm I will bless your name thank you
did it sound like somebody who is expectant of something great in the next few minutes? Praise the Lord. You are sounding excited like somebody who is expecting a breakthrough. Praise the Lord. You are sounding like somebody who is definitely sure that something is about to happen. Praise the Lord. If you really, really believe it's going to happen to you, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Wow. A new era is about to begin. I can't wait to walk side by side with you into this new blessing. It's a season I have never seen before. It's an era I am looking forward to. And I congratulate you that you are alive together with me to enter into it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shall we all rise up as we pray together? Father, we we'll come before you. But thank you because you are the living God, the mighty God. The strength of our life, the shield of our life, the hope of our life, the shepherd of our soul. By you we live, by you we move, and by you we have our being. Many desired to see this day. They spent and spent and spent. But unfortunately, it was not given to them. Many traveled from nation to nation. Traveling from the best hospital to another best hospital. But as for us, just with mere confidence, trust and faith in you, you brought us this far. We say thank you, Lord. For uprising and down sitting, we say thank you, Lord. For our incoming and outgoing, we say thank you, Lord. For what we eat and for what we drink, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. For the life of God in us. <laughs> there are people that have life, but life of Satan. Possessed by the spirit forces and powers of darkness. But we thank you, Father, because we have the Holy Spirit of God living, ruling, and reigning on the inside of us. We thank you, Father. This year, 2023, is almost over. And with high hope, we are looking forward to 2024. We are not ignorant of the fact that between now and 2024, 12 midnight, some lives will still be lost. But we are confident that we will not be a part of them. Amen. For you have a plan and purpose for our lives, which surely shall be fulfilled. Prepare us, Lord, for this assignment for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much. You may have your seat in the presence of the Almighty God. Very soon we are going to be listening to our general superintendent. But before then, as our custom, I'd like to share with you very briefly. And I'll be talking on the subject of running, running to win. Because you need to understand that the new year coming 
is a year that is going to be loaded with many things to accomplish. I need to remind you that life is full of competition, projects, assignments, responsibilities, and duties. And if you don't think ahead of time on how the year is going to be, you realize that day in, day out, the other day is like the previous day. And that is why you need to prepare yourself now from the very beginning of the year on how you want to live the rest of the year. Set goals and targets for yourself. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are incorruptible. I therefore so run. Not as uncertainly. You don't want to run and live every day as if you don't know what you are doing. You don't want to live any of those days without plans set for yourself. I therefore so run not as uncertainly. So fight I, not as one that beat at the air. You need to understand that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and only the violent will take it by force. Paul the Apostle said, I fight. Understand that for you to accomplish anything, to get anything, you've got to fight. Somebody say fight. Somebody say fight. It's going to be a year of fighting and winning the battles in Jesus' name. He says, so far I fight, I am not as one that beat at the air, but I keep my body under and bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So, life is full of pursuits. The race of life begins from the cradle to the grave. No matter whether you like it or not. <laughs> Let me actually tell you, maybe I should say, from the womb. Praise the Lord. Before you were born, you, 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 you fought. You competed with other people. I will call them people. Praise the Lord. That never became people. It is because you won that race that you are here today. I have told you before, I'm going to tell you again. If you know whom you have believed, who helped you to win the battle in your mother's womb? You will win again. Amen. Do I whisper something to your ears? Help me, help me whisper to the person next to you. Whisper in such a way that I will hear over here. Tell the person next to you, you are not a failure. Not a failure. Amen. Amen. Can you please help me whisper to another person and say, you are not a failure. You are a success in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So understand that anyone who refuses to run will end up rotting. You rot out. But that is not you. Those that refuse to leave will be left behind. Please look around and you see there are people that have been in this country before you. They have made little or no progress. You don't want to look to emulate people like that. You want to look out for people that are making progress in life. People that are getting things done. Understand that when the goalpost is down, the game of life is over. We must run to take advantage of the looming opportunities all around us. There are opportunities everywhere in the nation especially in this nation. And God brought you here for a purpose, to be a blessing to your generation. There are many people in your nation waiting for you. It will not be a disappointment. 
take advantage of the opportunities around you. And for that to happen, for you to take that advantage, number one, you must review your life. You must reset your life. And you must rebuild your life. The life we live as mortal men is such that can get to anywhere we desire to get to with God on our side. I look at number one, the properties of running to win. Running to win. The message is run to win. Point one, the properties of running to win. Point number two, the principles of running to win. Number three, the problems of winning the race. The problems of winning the race. And number four, the power for winning the race. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We normally get three points today. How many are you getting? Because you are going up higher. In Jesus' name. The principles, or sorry, the properties of winning. When you look at Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to 11, the scripture tells us about the hall of faith. How people like Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, and many others endured suffering and overcame obstacles. They ran the race of faith that was set before them. That was set before them. There is a race that is set before you. You cannot run my race. I cannot run your race. Sit down. Analyze your life. And establish what is meant for you. The race you are supposed to run. I run that race and you will run successfully in Jesus' name. Understand, I told you about fighting. There will always be obstacles on your way. If there is no battle, there is no need for fighting, and if there is no fighting, there is no victory. And the obstacles, the mountains on your way, you are bound to overcome them. And somebody here will overcome in Jesus' name. And looking at all these people, Enoch, Abraham, Jacob, Sarah, and the rest of them. The Bible tells us in the 12th chapter of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12, look at verse 1. It says, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. This coming year, 2024, will be a year of advancement for you in Jesus' name. What are the properties of winning the race? Number one, you must have intuition. You must be able to discern. You must be able to understand what you need to do, what you don't have to do. You need to understand when you need to take a break, when you need to take a rest. You need to understand the gift and the giftings of God in your life. You need to understand the plan and the purpose of God for your life. You need perseverance. A lot of things are going to happen. Challenges are going to be there, but you persevere. You need patience. You need focus. You need passion. Amen. You need to be tenacious. And then you see God working in your life. Point number two, the principles of running to win. Number one, you must desire a goal. You must make a decision for that goal. It's wanting to desire something. It's another thing to decide I'm going to get it. Amen? Praise the Lord. And then it's not enough to say I have decided to do it. You must also be determined for it. 
And when we talk about determination, that is when you now begin to pray. Yes, you desire, you decided, now you determine. You begin to pray. And then you begin to plan. He who fails to plan, will plan to fail. Amen? You perspire. You persevere. And then you partner with God. And look for people that are successful in that area and partner with them. And then, not that alone, there must be dexterity for reaching your goal. Know your gifts and your giftings. There must be diligence. So then, if you are going to run effectively, successfully, number one, you must run with conviction. Galatians 5, 7. You must run with caution. 1 Corinthians 9, 26. You must run with concentration. Galatians 2, 2. You must run with scriptural companions. Philippians chapter 2, verse 16. Be writing them down. I don't have enough time. Amen. To read everything. You must run with the great commission. 2 Samuel chapter 18, verse 19. You must run with confidence. You must run with the word of comfort. Things will happen. You need to be comforted. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 26. You must run with clear vision. Clear vision. Paul said, I'm not running as one that is beating the ear. There must be clear vision. You must run with commandments, the commandments of the Lord. You must run without compromise. No matter what is happening, you don't compromise your faith. You must run without covetousness. You must run without complaining. Point number three, problems. To win in the race. What are the problems? Number one, fear. Fear of failure. Fear of disappointment. Fear of resources. Whatever the fear may be, say to yourself, I am overcoming the fear. Say to yourself, I'm breaking the limits. No matter what your situation may be, the Lord will give you victory in Jesus' name. Saul, the king of Israel, was meant to win the battle, but he became afraid until David showed up. And as soon as David showed up, victory was certain. Pay attention. David was a teenager. Not an adult yet, but he had something in him. What was it that he had? He had the ancient of this living on the inside of him. David knew that he was not going to fight the battle by himself, but that somebody is going to fight for him. I have a good news for you. Every step of, your, of the day, every day of your life, in this coming year, the Lord is fighting for you. Never you be afraid of anything. Another problem is distraction. Distraction. Colossians 4, 17, and say to Archippus, take ye to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it, you will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Then, satanic scare, the devil scaring you. You're having this dream, negative, that dream, negative. Forget about the dream. Hold on to the word of the Lord. I say, hold on to the word of the Lord. And begin to declare what the Lord has spoken concerning you. At other times, it's ungodly pursuit. Anything you are pursuing, don't just say, well, anything I lay my hands upon to do will prosper. Is that the will of God, the plan of God, and the purpose of God for your life? Amen? Because the Bible says, where your treasure is, that is where your heart is going to be. And then, what then do you do? You want to be sure that every day of your life, you avoid subtle temptations of the enemy. Avoid overestimating the ability and the power of the devil. Avoid losing your faith. Have faith in God. Point number four. Power for winning the race. Power for winning the race. Where do we derive our power from? We derive our power from the word of God. We derive our power from the promises of God. We derive our power from the power of prayer. 
So I list them. Number one, exceeding precious promises of God. Second Peter chapter one verse four. Number two, extended period of prayer. Pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians chapter five verse seventeen. Number three, enlisting prayer partner. Look for people that will pray with you, plan with you, work with you. And then, enthusiasm of purpose. Be enthusiastic. Be happy. Be interested in your life. See the end from the beginning. You want to become a medical doctor? Begin to imagine the doctor in the house. Amen? Amen. You want to become an engineer? Begin to see that engineer in yourself. Sometimes you believe this one can do it, that one can do it. How about you? I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. This coming year will be your year of accomplishment in Jesus' name. Amen. And then try to eliminate the strongholds of the enemy. In the battles of life, wrestling, uh, boxing, when your enemies see your weak point, they begin to punch you there. Discover that. And never allow the enemy to take advantage of you. Ensure that you, you, you get endued with the power of the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. It's not enough for you to receive pardon from sin. You need purity of heart and then you need the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to make it alive. If you are not yet baptized in the Holy Ghost, this coming year, it will happen in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. And um, earlier this morning, after administration, during prayer, people keyed in into prayer. Keyed into, into prayer. I felt sorry that we stopped it too soon. Because people already were, were already into another realm of the Spirit speaking in tongues. Get filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And the power of God will come upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. Make sure no matter what you do, the kingdom of God is number one. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all other things shall be given unto you. So then, be full of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Frustrate the efforts and the power of all the evil forces. And fulfill your destiny. Your calling. Run to win. Don't just run. Don't just live the coming year. Make sure you're a goal getter. Somebody just means that. Amen. Set the goal for yourself and pursue that goal. And pursue that goal. Avoid distraction. And you see things happening. Because the year 2024 is coming with great promises. Great things are going to happen. Great things are going to happen. Before the end of that year, you will rejoice with me. Did you hear what I just said? Before the end of 2024, you will rejoice with me. You see, some of you, you, you don't get it. Some people, because they are pastors, they don't give testimony. If you notice, Amen. Uh, at a time like this, I stand up, I give testimony. The more I testify, the more more things are happening. I speak to somebody. January, testimony. February, testimony. March, testimony. April, testimony. May, testimony. June, testimony. July, testimony. August, testimony. September, testimony. October testimony, November testimony, and December. Stand up, your testimony is here already. Begin to pray. I will make it in life. I will succeed in life. I will prosper in life. I will win. I will not run in vain. My time will not be wasted. My life will not be wasted. This coming year, great things are going to happen in my life. Talk to God, talk is about your life. 
You are taking charge. 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 I will be focused. I will be fruitful. I will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. The Lord will walk with me. I will not be a failure. assisting us, giving us your grace to live for your glory even to this point. We pray, Lord, from this point on, we'll go higher in Jesus' name. We we'll reach farther in Jesus' name. And we pray that you deal with every one of us as your beloved, special, favorite child in Jesus' name. Help us today to take in your word and to pray through your word and then to have the benefit of your word in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to Leviticus chapter 26. And I'm reading from verse 10. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 10. And ye shall eat old stock and bring forth the old because of the new. Somebody shout amen. amen. You notice two words there, the old and the new. And here is the promise of the Lord. Here is the provision of the Lord. Here is the prophetic utterance of the Lord. That he shall eat the old store. You'll not forget the old store. You'll not cast out the old store. You'll not abandon the old store. And then it says, and bring forth the old. Then it says, because of the new. Here the Lord brings together the old and the new. You should understand. We're getting to the new year. But we don't abandon the old house where we've been living. We can renovate it. We can paint it. We can make it better, but we don't abandon the old house. We can renew it as we come to the new year. You understand? Here we carry a body around. The same body that we used and had in the old year. The same body we carry into the new year. Yes, we can make it healthier, happier, stronger, so that the new year will have the same old body, but will have a renewed strength. Here we are. The same family we have now. In the old year, we carry that same family to the new year. We can renew our covenant. We can renew our relationship. And we can make better provision for that family. Yet, it's still the same family that we carry to the new year. There are many people that have the wrong idea that... All that were learned in the old year, all the consecrations were made in the old year, all the covenants were made in the old year. As we come to the new year, we are abandoned. And then we'll say we're starting afresh now. It is like we never had any conversion, never had any conviction, never had any consecration, never had any commitment. It's a new year now. That's wrong. The same conversion that we had in the old year, we carry to the new year. The same consecration we had in the old year, we carry to the new year. And the same commitment we had in the old year, we carry to the new year. We make it better, we make it higher, 
and we make him stronger, but it's still the same old commitment and consecration we're carrying into the new year. There are many people that make mistakes. And you say, you see the Old Testament, we can close that up, we can cancel that, we can forget that, let's rush and move on to the New Testament. That's wrong. The same God of the old, it is the same God of the new. And the same God that says, I am God, I change not. He brings us from the old, he brings us to the new. He may lift us higher, but we we'll build on the foundation of the old. And we stand on the strength of the old. And we obey all the words that he has given us, coming from the old to the new. Come back to Leviticus chapter 26, reading from verse 10 again. It says, and you shall eat old stuff. And bring forth the old because of the new. Then he says, I will set my tabernacle among you. Amen. My soul shall not abhor you. I will walk among you. I will walk among you. If you don't abandon the old for the new, if you don't forget the old covenant totally because of the new, if you don't forget your old relationship with the Lord because you are coming to a new year, then he says, I will walk among you. I will be your God, and you shall be my people. Verse 13, I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt. It says that, that old land, I'm, that, I'm still that same God. The old familiar territory, I brought you out of that. I'm still the same God. It says I am the Lord. I'm bringing you out of the old year. I'm taking you to the new year. And it says I'm still that same God that brought you forth out of the land of Egypt that ye should not be their bond men. And I have broken the bands of your yoke. My yokes are broken. My fetters are broken. My oppression is taken away. He says, I have broken your yoke and made you go, tell me, tell me, upright. Made you go upright. The same feet were used in the last year, in the old year, walking in the way of God, walking in the path of righteousness. The same feet is going to be stronger, it's going to be steadier, and it's going to be faster. But the same old feet we had in walking uprightly, that same feet we still have of the old things we had in every study, in every service. All those old things the Lord gave us, we carry them without losing them. And we go into the new year. The subject today is the new beneficiaries of the old inexhaustible provision. The new beneficiaries. Are they here today? New beneficiaries. I said, are they there today? What are they? New beneficiaries. New beneficiaries. Put on your hands. God bless you. I said, God bless you. The new beneficiaries of the old inexhaustible provision. Three things. Number one, believing the old promises for new pilgrims. They are old, those promises, as old as the Old Testament, as old as the ancient of days, the old promises, but for new pilgrims. Number two, bringing the old price for a new progress. Bringing the old price for a new progress. Point number three, benefiting from the old privileges as new peculiar people benefiting from the old privileges as new peculiar people number one believing the old promises for new pilgrims to start with we need to understand the old testament people were referred to as pilgrims and strangers and the new testament people the same thing old or new we are pilgrims. We're walking this path. We're going from here to there. We're going from earth to eternity. We're going from this world to heaven. As it was with them that were called pilgrims. So it is with us. We're called pilgrims. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 13. These all died in faith. Not having received the promises. But having seen them afar off, were persuaded of them and embraced them 
and they confess that they were in the old they were in the old testament they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth mark it down your mind note it down on your paper they were called strangers and pilgrims let's come to first peter chapter 2 first peter chapter 2 we're reading from verse 11 dearly beloved is talking to new testament believers now it's talking to you talking to me it's talking to the people who refer to themselves that they're now in the new covenant look at what it says it says dearly beloved i beseech you as strangers and pilgrims as strangers and pilgrims the same thing that was said about the old covenant people strangers and pilgrims the same thing it says about the new covenant people strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul what were the old testament promises the old promises that saw them through those people of the past how did they get through how did they walk the narrow way what was their strength what was their support what was the standard before them what were the experiences they had that made them stand believing the old promises for new pilgrims isaiah chapter 45 i'm reading from verse 22 isaiah chapter 45 verse 22 look unto me and be saved all the ends of the earth for i am god and there is none else what carry them through salvation salvation from god god alone and they have to look away from their idols look away from their tradition look away from the past and look unto him because he is god and there is none else that can save that's old testament what does it say in the new testament acts chapter 4 verse 12 neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved have you noticed that is saying look unto christ is the only savior look away from darkness look away from occultism look away from tradition look away from religion look away from every other thing and look unto jesus because there's no salvation in any other in the old salvation in the new salvation come to exodus chapter 15 exodus chapter 15 in the old verse 26 the promises of the old that follow us into the new exodus chapter 15 verse 26 and said if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord thy god and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments plural and keep all his statutes plural i will put none of these diseases upon thee which are brought upon the egyptians for i am as i was i am i am the lord what does he do for you that he lets be that's in the old that's in the old it says we listen to his commandments we obey his commandments we walk in the paths of righteousness he says you know what i'm going to do for you i will be your healer i am the lord that he lets be that's old testament come to the new testament now james chapter 5 james chapter 5 i'm reading here from verse 15 the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the lord shall raise him up if he has committed sin they shall be forgiven him confess your faults one to another and pray one for another tell me what then will happen tell me if you're opening your bible with me that ye may be healed stop there confess your faults when you're sick when you're oppressed when you have pain wrecking ruining and making your body like grass and you don't know what to do it says think through sin and sickness are joined together sin and suffering are joined together and if you find any sin that's the cause of this 
confess your sin unto God that he will forgive you. And then the person you have offended, confess your sin, your faults, one to another. And then pray one for another that she may be healed. The healing is still dependent on hearing the word, accepting the word, keeping the word, obeying the word. You cannot say now, this is New Testament. God, heal me. I'm going to use the healing to serve the devil. But heal me anyhow. No, it says, sin no more. Lest it was sin come on thee. That's why it says, confess your faults one to another, that she may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And you see here, name in there. Let's look at Job chapter 5, verse 19. Job chapter 5, verse 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. What is she there? What is she there? No evil will touch you. Evil eyes will not see you. Evil power will not cut your life down. Accidents will be far away from you. Disasters will be far away from you. Look at what it says in the old, that it will deliver us from six troubles. And then, remember, seven is the number for completeness, for totality. Every form of evil, the Lord will deliver you in Jesus' name. Let's come to the New Testament, 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 18. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. That's for me. I said that's for me. Why don't you say to yourself, the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever Amen. you see what the lord is saying it's in the old it's in the new and so we who are new testament pilgrims we're taking those promises in the old and we know that they are brought into the new and we're not just abandoning everything of the old and saying we're settling up for the new. I'm coming back to the Old Testament, Second Chronicles, chapter one. Second Chronicles, chapter one. I'm reading from verse seven. Second Chronicles, chapter one, verse seven. In that night, did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, "Ask what what I shall give thee. Ask." What I shall give thee, verse 10, give me now, somebody there, give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before these people. For who can judge this thy people that is so great? Understand here, the Lord gave him an open check and said, ask what you want as you come to the new what does it say? Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. He's bringing the old to the new. And it says, everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Ask, and he asked for wisdom. Come to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. I'm looking at verse 5. James chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, look at that. Old Testament, ask. And Solomon asked for wisdom. And God said, because you've asked for this, I'm going to give you this wisdom and knowledge, and I'm going to give you more. And we come to the New Testament, and it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. That give it to how many people? That give it to how many people? They're going to have greater wisdom today than when you came. They give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. I will have more wisdom, I will have more strength, I will have more knowledge, I will have. I will not be ignorant of the overcoming life. As we come into the new year, 
All the wisdom you need to overcome, the Lord will give you. All the knowledge you need to bring the enemy before your Christian life, to bring him down, you will have. And all the power, all the courage, all the strength, all the backbone you need to give you the strength to overcome in the new year, the Lord will give unto you in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 57. Old and then the new. Psalm 57. In Psalm 57, I'm reading from verse 2. Psalm 57, verse 2. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth, that performeth, that performeth, as we come to the new year. And then any challenge faces your life. You remember, that challenge is under the theme, the title, and the topic of all things. I'm looking at victorious people. I'm looking at conquering people. Nothing will drive you back from the way of victory, accomplishment, and success in the new year in Jesus' name. There is a God in heaven, and he performs all things for me. He will do it for you. Underline those words, all things for me. Matthew chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 33. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The same thing is said in the old. The same thing is said in the new. He performs all things for me. And in the new, as you go into the new year, there will be no failure in your life. As you pray, there will be no disappointment. As you seek the Lord, you will find the Lord. All things. Perform in your life all things. Don't in your life all things. We'll perform it for you in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 32. Romans chapter 8. Verse 32, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us, also freely give me, also freely give me? You'll have it. It will be done. You'll carry a basket of blessings of all things. Of all things, I said of all things, believing the old promises for new figures. Point number two, bringing the old price for new progress. Bringing the old price for new progress. There are many people that want to have progress. That's normal. That's legitimate. That's a good desire. But they don't connect price with progress. They think progress will just come. How did it happen? In the old, there's a price. In the new, there is a price. Let's come back to the old. Bring in the old price for a new progress. Second Samuel chapter 24. Second Samuel chapter 24, what did he from verse 24? And the king said unto Arauna, Nay, but I will surely buy each of thee at a price. I want progress at a price. I want improvement at a price. I want achievement at a price. I want divine favor at a a price. I want the plagues all to be totally erased, eradicated out of the nation at a price. You see, there are people, they say prayer is the key. And there's no price to that prayer. There's no self-denial to that prayer. And there is no giving something, giving themselves to that prayer. There is no absolute surrender to the King of Kings for that prayer. That's a superficial prayer, and it's not the key. It says, I will surely buy each of thee at a price, neither 
will I offer much offering unto the Lord, my God, of that which does cost me nothing. Cost me nothing. Cost me nothing. There are some people, and I hope our church does not become like them. They meet somebody, they say, speak a word in my life. They continue in their sin, speak a word in my life. They continue in their idolatry, speak a word in my life. They continue in their careless life, in the presence of the Lord, speak a word in my life. Their religion costs them nothing. Their prayers cost them nothing. Their service cost them nothing. But here David said, I will buy it at a price. And I will not offer anything to the Lord that cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for fifty shekels of silver. And David built there an altar to the Lord and offered bunch offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land and the plague was staged from Israel. Price. The old price. If we're going to make new progress, Matthew chapter 13, New Testament now, Matthew chapter 13, is still the same. We're reading from verse 44 and verse 45. Matthew chapter 13, verse 44, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure, hid in a field, which when a man has found, he hideth and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he had and buys the field. He selleth all that he had and he buys the field. This is a man that knows if you're going to have treasure in the kingdom of God, there is a price to pay. In verse 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly peers, verse 46, who when he had found one peer of great price. Christianity is not cheap, of great price. Following the Lord is not cheap, of great price. Serving the Lord is not cheap, of great price. Having a place in the kingdom of God is not cheap, of great price. He went and sold all that he had, and he bought it. He bought it. Look at First Corinthians chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 19. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Look at this. For ye are bought, tell me, tell me, what a price, what a great price. Ye yeah, are bought, what a price. Because of the price that brought you into the kingdom. That's why you're willing to pay any price. You will keep your place in the kingdom in Jesus' name. Hey, look, at, look at that again, verse 20. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Glorify God in your body. Pastor, tell me, how do I glorify God in my body? Your hand, part of your body, you'll never write anything, sign anything that will not glorify God. Your feet, part of your body, you'll never use your feet and walk anywhere, drive anywhere that will not bring glory to God. Your eyes, you'll never see anything. You'll never be interested in anything. The people of the world, they are, you know, excited about that scene, masquerades. And they're running after old men and old women and young adults, men and women. Masquerade has come, masquerade has come. And they're running after. Your feet will not follow them. Give me a good amen. Your eyes will not see them. No. All those dirty things they show on the screen of any gadget. Your eyes will not see them. You know, you're looking for something on the internet, and then something pops up, and it says, follow this. No, I'm following Christ. I'll not follow that. I said, I'm following Christ. Anybody following Christ there? I am following Christ. I am following Christ. I will not follow that thing. Psalm 4, I'm reading from verse 3. Psalm 4, and we're looking at verse 3. But no, 
that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself, not for Satan, not for evil, not for pollution, not for corruption. He has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. He set apart everyone that is godly for himself. We're looking at Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 11. Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. We've read in the Old Testament. He set apart him that is godly for himself. And now, New Testament, Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, look at this, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. For thy pleasure they are and were created. Point number three, benefiting from the old privileges as new peculiar people. Again, we're coming from the old to the new, and we're pointing out that all the good things the Lord has taught us in this old year, as we go to the new year, those good things abide. Those uh, righteous standards abide. And those peculiarities abide. And we're not going to say it's a new year, therefore it's going to be a year of carelessness. It's going to be a year of sinfulness. No, we're peculiar people, peculiar in the old, peculiar in the new. Come to Exodus chapter 19. Exodus Chapter 19, I'm reading here from verse 5. Exodus chapter 19, verse 5. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me, above all people, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and an holy nation, these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, Everybody, one, two, three, go. One, two, three, go again. One, two, three, once again. All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. That's how to be a peculiar treasure, peculiar people. You see those Old Testament people, peculiar people. Let's come to First Peter, First Peter, chapter two. I'm reading from verse nine. First Peter, chapter two. Reading from verse nine. Peculiar treasure, peculiar people in the old, peculiar people too in the new. We're not supposed to be common. We're not supposed to be ordinary. Look at, you know, he says, as a Christian, I can't see any peculiarity in his life. It's an, is a Christian walking in any office, you cannot see the peculiarity of punctuality, the peculiarity of signing the exact time that he came to the office. He's going to sign another time. Peculiarity. Other people are claiming, um, you know, um, over time, which they didn't do. He, you cannot see any peculiarity. In his life, it's just like the same. It's a Christian in a family. And this one, the family got married that way. This one, the family got married that way. When he's going to get married, he marries in the same way. You cannot see any peculiarity. If you're a child of God, the Lord said in the old, you're a peculiar treasure unto me. You'll be different. You'll be distinct. What the other people wear, you wear the same. What's the peculiarity? How the other people go, you go the same path, what's the peculiarity? All your family members, this is what they do, and you are never different. What's the peculiarity? In the old, the people of God were peculiar. Come to the new, in the new, we're peculiar. And thank God I am peculiar. I said I am peculiar. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But she a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. And holy nation, tell me what follows, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 
your will be peculiar. And by actual, the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 1. I'm reading here from verse 19. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. If ye be willing and obedient, are you there? If ye be willing and obedient, I said, are you there? You know, in the past, we used to run to the Bible study. That time, I remember, we had only one Bible study in Lagos State. And people from Ekpe, they will come Monday night. From Mikrodu, they will come Monday night. From Padagri, they will come Monday night. And if the hold up delayed them as they got down from the bus and they looked at their time and they said crosses were started, uh -uh, they start running. How many of you remember those days? Those days are coming back again. You will enjoy hearing the word of God. You'll be willing hearing the word of God. It will not be for bread, bread and butter. You will seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness and you give God chance to add all other things unto you in Jesus' name. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. And one of the people that will eat the good of this land. I said, I am. I said, I am. I said, I am. One of the people that will eat the good of the land in Jesus' name. Famine will never get to your house. Poverty will never get to your house. Willing, willing, willing and obedient. What are we expecting now? For the new year, I'm sure. Second Peter, Second Peter, Second Peter, chapter one, verse three. According as His divine power, He has given unto you, He has given unto unto us how many things? All things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue, virtue this year, glory this year divine goodness this year whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lost every bad thing in your community you will escape every hazard every danger in your community you will escape the promises of God will be yes and amen in your life in Jesus' name. And I now usher you to the new year with the promises of God. Before you, the promises of God. Behind you, the promises of God. On your left, the promises of God. On your right, the promises of God. As you go, the power of God will go with you. The presence of God will go with you. And the sufficiency of God will go with you. No evil will come your way. The devil will fall before you in Jesus' name. As your days are, so will your strength be. Deuteronomy chapter 33. Deuteronomy chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 25. Thy shoes will be iron and brass. As thy days so shall thy strength be. There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun, who rideth upon the heaven in thy hell, and in his excellency on the sky. The eternal God is your refuge. Underneath you are the everlasting arms. They shall thrust out the enemy from before you, and shall say, destroy them. Israel, the people of God here today, shall dwell in city alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also your heavens shall drop down dew. Happy art thou. Happy art thou. Happy art thou. Who is like unto thee, O people, saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help? Who is the sword of thy excellency? Thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee. Thou shalt tread upon their high places. This coming year, you'll go higher. You'll be the head. You'll not be the tail. You'll be in front. You'll not be at the back. Progress. Peace. Prosperity. Healing. 
Health. Deliverance. Dominion. Miracles upon miracles all over your life. Rise up and receive. Rise up and receive. Rise up and receive. It's your time. It's your time. The time of repression. The session of repression. The season of repression. The beginning right now. Right now. Right now. Tell the Lord of your mouth what do you want. Why have you come? Of the promises the Lord has made. Which one are you claiming today? Which one are you receiving today? Multiplication. Abundance in your life. Grace in your life. Mercy in your life. Forgiveness, salvation, freedom, liberty, liberation, the breaking of yoke, everything. He loves you. And he says, I'm not going to leave you until, until, until I have done that which I told you of. Expect his blessing. Express your faith that Lord I know the faithful God as you said you will do and you said the better time has come I believe I receive season of repression season of multiplied blessing In Jesus' name we pray. If I tell you something, will you believe? I said if I tell you, forget about other people. If I tell you something, will you believe? God has answered your prayer. Those tears are wiped away. That sorrow is taken away. That dryness is taken away. I don't have, I don't have, that has gone. Now you have, now you possess, and the blessing of the Lord will never stop in your life in Jesus' name. Your day of blessing has come. Say, my day of blessing has come. The session of renewal has come. My season of refreshing has come. I accept. I accept. The rivers are going to flow into your life. Rivers of blessing are going to flow into your life. If you accept, raise up that hand. If you know it's happened, raise up that hand. Father, in Jesus' name, we accept your blessing. We accept your miracle. We accept your power. We accept the provision. And Lord, I pray, every brother, every sister, every boy, every girl, the blessings, all the blessings of the Almighty God begin to flow, begin to flow, begin to flow into every life in Jesus' name. The joy of sins forgiven, the joy of salvation, the joy of victory, the joy of a new life, the joy of a new day, and the joy of the beginning of seasons of refreshing upon your life in Jesus' name. The tears of the past wiped away. Sorrows of the past wiped away. And oh Lord, I pray every body and every yoke and every problem taken away from them in Jesus' name. Salvation for every soul. Conversion of every life. Grace for everyone. Forgiveness for everyone. The tangible manifestation of your presence in every life in Jesus' name. The spirit to conquer. The spirit to overcome and the spirit to climb every mountain before them, even to them in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray you multiply your blessing in every life. Every good desire, every good thing they have asked of you, confirm it right now in Jesus' name. More than how they can pray, more than what they can ask, more than what they can lay hold on. Give everyone, everyone, everyone more in Jesus' name. Let the rivers begin to flow. Let the rivers begin to flow. Let the rivers begin to flow. And your joy will be unlimited in Jesus' name. Receive. 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 The windows of heaven be opened upon you. 
and your life be enriched, and your life be strengthened. No sickness will hinder you anymore. No weakness will hinder you anymore. And no kind of past failure will hinder you anymore. Go forth and swim in the river of the blessing of God. It's confirmed. It's confirmed. It is confirmed. In Jesus' name we pray. It is well with me. 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 You sing to the Lord, you dance to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a year of jubilation. It's a year of celebration. Ah, it is well with me. Ah, yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with me. Praise the Lord. Praise. Looking at my clock, I have a good news for you. It's a new year. It's a new year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We are not done yet, but move around, shake the hands of minimum 10 people and begin to say, Happy New Year. you. God bless you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. God bless you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. God bless you. 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 Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy, happy, happy New Year. The Lord be with you. Bless you. In the name of Jesus. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Happy New Year. <laughs> happy New Year. Happy, happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, God bless you. Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Happy New Year. Amen. Press worship team, where are you? On the stage. The keyboardists, the guitarists, 
the saxophonist, the trumpeter. Where are you all? Oh, Lord, I am very, very grateful for all you have done for me. Oh, Lord, I am very, very grateful. And I say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is your first worship in the new year. Oh, Lord, I am very, very grateful. And I say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. getting a signal that we need to take the first offering for the new year. First. Amen. 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 They will give us the song. Amen. Amen. You know, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Where are the ushers? Let the ushers all come out. Let the ushers come out. Let them line up here. We are going to give with joy, with happiness, with gladness. Amen. And so, listen, listen, listen. If you have never been here before on our first day of the year, you will dance to the front, amen. You will worship the Lord with your gift and your offering. Amen. Praise worship. Praise worship. 